Hello, I'm Amanda Stout, climate scientist for the National Wildlife Federation. As the southeast United States begins to emerge from its second major drought of the last decade, I've examined what factors will be important for future water supply in the region. My research shows that for about 40 years prior to these recent droughts, the southeast operated under unusually good water availability conditions. Water supply was plentiful and droughts were rare. But historical records show that regular droughts are more typical for the southeast. Why is this important? Well, since 1960, the region's population has doubled and water use has more than tripled. But strategies for meeting this increased regional demand for water have not taken into account the regular occurrence of drought. During 2007's drought, for example, crop losses are estimated at more than $1.3 billion, and wildfires ravaged 600,000 acres in Georgia and Florida. Now, global warming is expected to bring even more uncertainty, potentially causing more extremely dry periods and more heavy rainfall events. At the same time, warming-induced sea level rise will increase the risk that salt water will contaminate critical underground freshwater reserves. These climate changes will affect the water supply to communities and put the amazing biodiversity of the southeast at risk. Many of the fish, mussels, salamanders, and other freshwater species of this region are found nowhere else in the world, and they are already imperiled. Climate change poses an additional threat to these species. The southeast needs to develop a plan for addressing continued instability in its water supply. By making better use of existing water infrastructure and improving water use efficiency, the water system can be made more reliable and resilient. And the region should take an integrated approach to meeting the multiple demands of communities, agriculture, and industry while still addressing flood control, reducing energy usage, and protecting clean water, fish, and wildlife. You can see my full analysis at www.nwf.org slash extremeweather.